So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, please stay with me. It's the last presentation before lunch. So I hope you still have a little bit of energy to follow my presentation. Um, I'm Lorenzo Fellin. I'm a first year PhD student. And um, actually, I'm working mainly on optimization of biological control programs for the combat against the Drosophila Suzuki, which is the spotted wing Drosophila you can see on the top right. And um, so this is part of my study. And this is a study I mainly focus on host searching behavior of the parasitoids towards the, the host, the pest. So which one are the main characters of these stories? Uh, we have the pest, which is Drosophila Suzuki, which has in, is an invasive alien species, which came to uh, Trentino, but also to America, North America first, and then to Europe. Is native from Asia and have a very high economical impact, especially on soft berries and soft berries and like cherries as well. In Italy, actually, in Trentino only can make uh, damage up to four million euros. But anyway, it's very, very a danger, a dangerous pest. Uh, the parasitoid is Ganaspis brasiliensis, which is a larval parasitoid, and it's a very specific parasitoid of Drosophila suzuki, and that's why it's been chosen as the main candidate for biological control programs. So this is why it's been selected. It's very specific towards Drosophila suzuki. And these are the main characters, and what uh, we wanted to identify, which uh, very little was known, was how they actually interact, and especially how uh, Ganaspis brasiliensis, the parasitoid, is able to identify uh, Drosophila suzuki, especially because in this system, Drosophila suzuki and the larvae are within the fresh fruit. So are actually, um, how, how is this interaction um, happening, especially at different stages? Because we know not much about the long range, but at medium range, we know that mostly uh, these interactions are mediated by chemical stimuli. There are some examples done for different uh, related species, and also we are ongoing research going uh, to identify these chemical stimuli. But we know that are mainly mediated by chemical stimuli. But what actually happened in the short range, in the microhabitat, is mean only been mentioned in the past that there are some vibrotaxis uh, involved, but very little is known, especially for these kind of species, and especially for vibration that are actually occurring within a fresh fruit, like a blueberry in this case. So our first main question was, are actually vibration, uh, vibrational cue involved in the host searching and host detection of these parasitoids towards the larvae? And uh, to do so, we developed two experiments. Uh, the first one actually was just to investigate if uh, the infested blueberry is actually vibrating, okay? So if actually there are some vibration in the, in the infested blueberries. And secondarily, we investigated and we assessed the behavior that our parasitoid has on infested fruits. And to do so, we prepare both control uh, blueberries, which have not been infested, infested blueberries, and in the second case, for the second experiment, we also took these uh, infested blueberries and we froze it to maintain the chemical stimuli, but to uh, kill the larvae, to, to stop having vibrational clue. And let's see one by one these two experiments. This is the first material and method, the first experiments. We took the blueberries, we infested them with Drosophila suzuki larvae, we count the, the eggs present on the fruit, and then we perform five different uh, vibrational recordings at different intervals. So we had uh, uh, vibrational recordings done at five different times for each blueberry. And then we monitored the occlusion. So we checked out how many adults emerge from the blueberry. And let's see a little bit which kind we had of results. These are the different spectra and you can already see visually that there are vibration. Okay, so our infested blueberry actually vibrates. So the larvae chewing within the fruits create vibrations. And you have here the different timings actually that tells you that See, it looks that there is also difference in terms of uh, uh, infestation time. So when actually the infestation occurs and the different times also it's possible to determine and discriminate when this happens. So this is the same one, but I decided to categorize the different frequencies. And looking at the box plot, you see that there is a sort of increase from 48 hours to 168 hours. And then you actually have a drop of intensity. And uh, this is most likely due to host pupation because at the beginning you have larvae which are chewing within the fruit that are growing, getting bigger, and at some point these are turning into pupae. So they actually have less movement within the, the berries. But these are speculation at this moment. So um, we did some analysis, we did an analysis of variance, uh, and here you can see a p-value table. And these are pointwise analysis for all the different frequencies. And you can see that for the two different factors, which actually I have to move my, okay, otherwise you don't see the fact, okay. 
So if you look at the different factors and the groups of control and treatment, you have a statistical difference for all the different kind of frequencies. So you have difference between the control and the treatments. And also within the five level groups of hours, you can see there is statistical difference, apart from two points which most likely are due to uh, noise, especially at the beginning, and uh, unknown reasons at the top. But it's very for, for most of the frequencies, almost all of them, we have a significant difference. But this tells us only that within the five hours groups, there is statistical dif there is difference between at least one group. So we decided to do a post-talk analysis and to see and compare, compare a uh, pairwise analysis to see uh, how are the different hours group uh, different between each other. And um, you can tell that for most of the frequencies, again, and for most of the samples at different times interval, there is significantly difference. The only times where actually these are not different is, wait, I have to move this one, okay, are between 96 hours uh, at the top right and uh, the 264 hours. Most likely because, as we said before, when we have host pupation, we have a decrease of intensity. So the, what we record at 96 hours is similar to what we record back at 264 hours. And then another time where we don't have actually a significant support is between 160 day hours and uh, 216 hours. This is very similar also for the same reason. You actually reach a sort of plateau when you have the larvae and both pupae. So you're not, more like, you're not able to distinguish at this time. But apart from two different, these two different red blocks, in all the other cases, you are able to discriminate when, which kind of larvae are inside, for how long they have been inside. So in conclusion, like a short of what we have seen so far, we have larvae that develop, develop inside the blueberries, produce vibration. Okay, that's good. And then also we are able to identify the different kind of infestation time, and we are able to discriminate them. And this is, could be potentially used by Ganastris brasiliensis to identify the larvae within the blueberry and to discriminate actually how old they are. So in order to get deeper into this assessment, we decided to do the behavioral uh, as evaluations. As I said, we took the blueberries and we froze them. Then we placed them, also the control there and the treat and the control, we put them in an arena which was able to turn on an axis. This allows us to actually have always a very focused on the insect that we actually were recording. And then we did a little bit of video editing to improve the quality of the video to be able to, to see them properly. And then we did an analysis with a quantitative behavior analysis software. So let's see a little bit what uh, was, I was actually looking for for a long time. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, Ganastris brasiliensis uh, ovidepositing, so you can see here. And we did a dynamic cropping, always following the insect. And then we did also a contrast increase and a color inversion. So actually what we were able to see at the end was this, which was much easier to identify, especially the oviposit uh, behavior. And then we assessed four different kinds of uh, categories of behaviors moving, which was the insect moving without any antenning. Antenning, where actually the insect was antenning and touching the blueberries. Then we had grooming, where the insect was cleaning uh, wings, cleaning abdomen, okay, and arms. And then in the category of oviposition, we both look at extrusion. So when the insect was extruding the oviposit, oviposit the insertion, where actually was inserting uh, it within the blueberries and pumping, which is actually the effect of the muscle that actually pulsating to allow the reposition. And uh, this is more or less what we noticed. I decided to also put a video to show a little bit what uh, I was looking to. And here you can tell and you can see when Ganassus brasiliensis is extruding, okay, the repositor, and now when he's inserting it, and also soon you're gonna see also the pumping, so when actually the muscles are, are allowing the reposition, okay. I think you're gonna see it soon. Okay, here we are. Okay, so this is actually the behavior that we were able to, to assess. We were able to count them, the number of events, and also the duration of the event. And that's what we first, uh, which are the first result. First of all, the insect didn't like to stay on the control that they were not infested. As you can see here on the left side. So uninfested fruit were not attractive. But when it comes to infested fruit and frozen in fruit, we had uh, actually interest from, uh, from the insect. That the most, most of the time they stayed, all the 15 minutes, they were allowed to stay on the fruit. Actually, you don't see almost the big box plot of the second case of the infested fruit because all of them stayed at all the 15 minutes that they were allowed to on the fruit. 
And uh, let's see uh, when it comes to behaviors. Uh, when we look at the moving, and on the top side you have the number of event, and on the bottom you have the duration of the event, you can see that there's no difference in terms of moving. Bo in both cases, they moved more or less uh, similarly. When it comes to antenning, the numbers of antenning events were very similar, so there's not the statistical uh, difference, but the duration is actually higher in the frozen uh, case, when the blueberry were frozen. Grooming, instead, we have a very big difference. We have, a, wait, I'll move this one again. We have both a difference in terms of number of events and or duration of event. So the insect, the Graspis brasiliense that was an infested uh, blueberry that was frozen, so without larvae, they spend more time grooming, cleaning the antenna, cleaning the wing, okay, cleaning their sensors. But the most interesting part is mainly the behavior on their oviposition. So if we look at oviposition in terms of extrusion, the number of extrusions, there's no statistical difference, but the duration of them, there's much more duration of events in uh, infested blueberries, when the blueberry were uh, filled with alive larvae, when larvae were, were moving and alive. This, uh, we have also difference of insertion. We have uh, more insertion in terms of number and also uh, longer, longer insertions when the larvae of the Drosophila were still alive in the fruit. And the most uh, striking evidence is that uh, the event of pumping were much more frequent when the larvae were alive. So we see here that in 77% of our samples, we had a, a pumping event. When it comes instead to frozen blueberries where, dead, where larvae were dead, we only had one case out of 30, uh, of 27, that uh, actually performed pumping. So these are actually some, um, we came to our conclusion that Granaspis brasiliensis, first of all, is attracted by infested blueberries. And this is mostly like to the chemical clue, I was accused, as we see before. While control in uninfested blueberry are not attractive. And then we assess that actually there's a difference when vibration are present. When vibration are present, uh, the insect decrease the grooming time, okay, the cleaning and uh, the cleaning time but increase the oviposition, oviposition activity, which is then uh, due to the vibration that are present within the fruit. So all uh, oviposition activity in terms of extrusion, insertion, and also pumping. So within the microhabitat, micro we know that we have some chemical stimuli, but also vibration are playing an important role. And what we're trying to do, and we will try to do back in the next, uh, in the next month already, is to try some playback, tri playback trials that we didn't perform yet, using uh, uninfested fruit and a playback. And also we are now assessing the volatile um, profiles of, uh, uninfest, of uh, infested fruits, both the frozen one and the not frozen one. Also to confirm that there are not chemical um, clue, cues that actually are involved in the process. So I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you for your attention. And thanks to all my support, my supervisors, and here and back home. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>